Hey guys, today we are going to go over the top six most expensive launch party and release event promos. So I don't remember when they switched the name between launch party and release event promos. However, the concept is go to the game store after the release of the event or the release of the new set. And these are supposed to be given to everyone. Uh, typically the way the stores I have experienced have given them out is if you go to the Friday Night Magic where the event, the set has just released, everyone is given a promo. This is unlike FNM or Game Day where there is a limited supply. This is supposed to be given to everyone to celebrate the release of a new set. And the promo obviously comes from the new set. Back in the Odin days, the good old days, we had promos which were actually valuable. We had Mythic Planeswalker promos actually. And during Shards of Alara, this was the promo. They gave away the probably, I, I would say if they had not given away this card, uh, Johnny was always very good in standard when he was legal. It was a 15 to $20 card they gave him away to every single person to celebrate the release of the set. It had a ton of traffic and people wanted to get this card. So FNM was very good. Some stores also have a second event on Saturday. So it is possible for you to get two of these promos. These promos are given out in stacks. Each stack is, I would imagine 80 cards at least. And some stores get one stack, some stores get two. The advanced plus stores get three stacks or 240 of these promos, maybe more. I actually did buy these promos uh, from the stores directly after they rotated out. And they're very cheap and affordable. But a Johnny was a great promo. Restoration Angel, one of the problems was if you knew a card would be good, and this card everyone knew was go good, uh, it was, I mean, look at it. It's a 3-4 Angel, Splash of Born White, Flash Flying, and then Blinks a Creature. So what you would do is back in the day, you had Soul Bound. I forget what the it was called, Soul something. And you would take your knight, your knight card that gave everything double strike or gave the partner, soul partner. Wow, it's been a while. And then you would flash this block, block, and then that would be pretty good for you. And there was a good turn three, turn four. I played some type of a mono white deck with maybe this, yeah, mono white deck with some artifacts, but the artifacts were also in white. So that was one of the funner decks and I never saw one of these promos being given out. There is a store in Richmond that was given stacks upon stacks of this card and they directly put in eBay because they could sell it for five to $7 on eBay easily. So when you are given 200 plus of this card and you can make a profit of a thousand dollars, that is what some stores would do rather than give it out. But when you, let's talk seriously about the store surviving. Stores have some advantage. They get limited product like Commander's Anthology, like the Anthologies, the Modern Masters, the, the uh, limited sets. It used to be from the vaults. I don't know if we get those anymore or when, what the last one was. We also get, uh, they also get FNM promos, uh, buy a box promos and release day promos, but they get, of all these promos, they get the most of release day. They get stacks of these release day promos. You, If you set them on fire, you would still have them. It's just really hard to get rid of them. But uh, Valakut was a really good one. And that one was the battle for, not, I keep saying battle for Zendikar, original Zendikar. And each of these would have a really cool logo in the middle and then the release date. So in your pre-release kit would have the pre-release date and then these would have the launch date or the release, whatever that day was, the set came out to be sold in the public. This is the one advantage the store really has is they have access to promos, play mats, game day stuff. Otherwise, price-wise, they are gonna get beaten like a Pope. Um, it is not, it should be very obvious to you that your game store cannot compete with a TCG player vendor a larger vendor like Star City Games or Card Kingdom. 
it just cannot compete with their prices because why how they don't do it in the scale a lot of these mom and pop shops are being slowly but steadily and mercy without mercy beaten by these online vendors because people just want the cheapest they want the cheapest but this is one way to get people to play at your local game store the selling point of a local game store in my opinion has always been that it's a community and that's the only reason you would buy it and because i'm more kitchen table now my community is we play at my dining room table so it's not it's not something that at that point then i am interested in the cheapest price point right but if there are people at the local game store where there are not currently that many people actually i just hung out with friends just to, uh, this weekend i was with austin and i was explaining to him how magic stores work and it, he's a developer so we were i was with him most of the day just in the mall buying stuff as usual or trying to buy stuff as usual and he just didn't get it. it's a very unique concept where you try to explain that people play at local game store on friday night and that's instead of like spending lots of money they spend like five dollars for five hours of entertainment his question is how do do stores make money they sell it from singles boxes and just people wanting to support the store okay back to the promos we have phyrexian metamorph uh, this one did not come off as hot as restoration angel so stores actually gave this promo out it wasn't considered as valuable as it is today, mainly because today it's valuable because of ED8s, right? Back then, people wanted it for ED8s, but remember, it's super common. I remember having multiple copies of this. Yeah, The store that I played at in grad school would tell you, do you want a Metamorph or do you want the FNM promo? And they would always give you the metamorph or you would always choose the metamorph and this continued on for many many months the store we had was like eight people but out of the eight people maybe four of them played standard and we just the four people who played standard accumulated a ton of them because we got them every single time we played here's a interesting one so this is from code snap code snap is a set that is very strange in my opinion it didn't it didn't feel like it fit and one of the better cards was just this viper snake in green and that was like the only card i can remember that was valuable at the time but these tokens were already considered valuable so unlike the metamorph which was hit or miss this was known to be valuable and it was very difficult to get a hold of and again stores would go ahead and sell them it was valuable because it was a foil token i believe this is in foil and there's not that many copies of foil tokens right at the time it was kind of unique let me check that up i'm pretty sure sure that is a foil that this is only available in foil oh it's also from the vault lore oh cool from the vault lore has a foil version of this as well and it's much much cheaper it's like four dollars from the vault uh promotional I cannot tell if it is foil. Oh, it is foil. So at the time, the reason it was pricey and it wasn't like $13 or at one point $20 pricey, or even as you see from the graph, $40 was due to the fact it was foil. And people were like, oh, foil token, that is so out there. That's crazy, right? And I don't know why, but we didn't believe, uh, I didn't believe it would hold value and it has now recently be re been reprinted and it has gone down from uh, gone down in price so now we are going to talk about the most valuable pre-release release event promo and it is this one unknown very unknown as a promo i cannot imagine what happened to these because it just didn't it's recent enough that stores are probably given stacks of this but I've never seen one out in the wild. And that's unique because people call me or text me to sell me all types of stuff. I had someone try to sell me the plane chase decks. All of them were sealed, all of them original. And I was like, nah, I'm not going to buy this because I can just buy and 
anthologies, which is on a fire. Like, it is very cheap right now for Planeswalker anthology. It's way below MSRP at the current time. But I never remember seeing one of these cards. I just don't remember the store receiving them. I would help manage store inventory for the digital sales part of it, and I never, I don't feel like we ever received any of these. To summarize, these are great opportunities for stores to get players in their store, to get people at F and M. The it, it's kind of a cycle, right? So if you have a lot of players, then those players will tell other players, and then you have a very healthy community. But as soon as you start to spiral down, then it's very hard to get yourself back up. And the local game stores I have in Houston, that I attend, or I go to, I don't have. A reason to go to them. There's not this catchy promo. There's not this amazing release promo. There's no excitement in terms of the build up, right? One day they gave away a、uh, plane chase card or whatever the card is, a plane worth twenty bucks. Another day they gave away a foil mythic, a foil mythic planeswalker. That's pretty exciting. I don't know why they don't do it anymore. You might argue that oh, they're going to kill the price on the cards. I'm not asking for the best card. I'm just asking for something that is reasonable and something that will get me to give my time up. As I feel like there's so many more options of entertainment. I actually was at Top Golf or just hanging out the mall, going to various anime stores. It's hard for me to imagine Magic local game stores competing without this incentive. This is the only reason that your Magic game store has, in terms of value, over something like eBay or TCG Play or Card Kingdom. All these heavily promoted, promoted digital pro-、um, sales, right? You might be like, "Oh, I want to support Card Kingdom," but Card Kingdom isn't your, your local game store. And the only advantage your local game store has over Card Kingdom is that it can give you these free promos, no cost for free. I mean, Card Kingdom, I guess, could do it, but it's unlikely to do it because they'll just put the promos for sale. Now, you might be like, "Oh, well, I can just buy the promo for forty cents, fifty cents, right?" That's true. I just have a gut feeling that the way to save Magic and get more players in the store, because once you get ten players in the store. Then you get twenty. Then you get twenty-five. That's how the store grows. I'm not going to go to F and M if I don't know if it's going to launch or not. I'm not going to waste my time because it's not worth it to me to go there, sit there for two hours, and not have it launch. Right.、Um, so this is a great way to do it because then you're guaranteed to hit your ten, and then you're guaranteed to hit your twenty because these are great, valuable cards given in bulk. That's the key difference. I'll talk about F and M later today. But these are given in bulk, stacks upon stacks upon stacks of them. Anyway, that's it, guys. Bye.